Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. Uh, so today I wanted to start a video on repairing and getting working this uh, little MIDI controller keyboard thing here, which currently does not work and I'll explain why in a minute. Now it's a um, well, the NEM Audio Keystation 61ES, so it's 61 keys, not a full piano um, keyboard, but uh, you know most of these things are uh, actually smaller than this one, uh, maybe even half the size, so it's not bad for what it is. You can get a full size one um, but this is the one I have at the moment. So, um, uh, it's basically, unlike a standalone, like a digital piano or keyboard or whatever, um, this is basically just purely a controller, which is to say it's like a computer keyboard, basically. Um, you kind of compare this between, like, if this was a keyboard, it would be like a computer keyboard, and then, like a piano would be like a typewriter, for example. Um, so this, you know, cannot make any sound, there's no speakers in it, there's no audio, no nothing like that, it's simply just a, a system, electronic c controller in here which takes the takes the note data from the keys when you press them um, and it sends that into MIDI signals that it transmits through the USB or standard MIDI interface um, that you can plug into a computer or another instrument to control it um, or a synthesizer or whatever you've got um, but yeah by itself it doesn't really do anything so it does have to be plugged into some other, other device um, Anyway, so the thing with this is it doesn't work, of course, otherwise why would we be here? <laughs> uh, so it's something I wanted to uh, I wanted to get one to play around with um, for myself, and I bought this second hand for, I don't know, about 20 bucks or less or something. I can't remember exactly. Um, it was described as not working, and I figured it would be an easy fix because the fault was described as having a broken USB port. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't that easy. It hasn't been, so yeah. Um, the original control boards I've got in here, now it's got two of them, one one in this bag um, does the kind of key scanning for the whole key bed array and obviously puts out some kind of data stream to this other controller board here which I've already started scavenging parts off to build another one. Um, so this uh, is the controller and this one is uh, something wrong with it. Now there was a USB port on here which I've you know in the same location as the one on this one you can see the similarity. Um, the USB port that was originally on here had the center part snapped off so that's the uh, little plastic bit that holds the plug in place. Um, it looked like a fairly simple thing maybe someone had tripped over a cable or something and just broke the plug and I thought well you know that should be easy fix just replace the socket and it's fine. So I did that and unfortunately when I plugged it in, well, nothing happened whatsoever. Um, I checked the voltages, the regulator 7805 was putting out 5 volts just fine, um, but I did notice it was starting to get quite hot. Um, I looked around and I thought, oh, maybe something's shorted, but, you know, these things would shut down on a short, so there wasn't a dead short. Um, eventually I basically figured out that I think the uh, main microcontroller on here, it's an ST Evolution 3, whatever that is, I haven't looked it up um, really, but basically it was drawing about 200 milliamps uh, from the supply and just doing nothing, you know, no, no messages on the USB bus, nothing um, coming out whatsoever, so I think the, uh, the chip has got some sort of internal short or something. Um, it doesn't seem to be doing anything whatsoever, there's no data on any of the pins coming out or anything, it's just not working, it just seems pretty much dead. So um, I contacted the distributor of M Audio products here and you know they told me that I'd have to buy both the boards, which kind of doesn't make sense because this one's probably perfectly fine, it's only this one that's faulty. Um, and that would probably cost me more than buying a whole new controller anyway, so the concept of doing that was completely pointless because I wanted to just get a cheap one to muck around with um, without having to spend too much money obviously so that was kind of a waste of time and I thought well um, maybe it's possible to do one yourself um, and I looked around, I started googling around and seeing well what have we got and came up with a few sort of projects that I discovered um, a couple of ones people have con uh, like added a MIDI interface to an existing keyboard, like a standalone one that has speakers and everything. Um, cause a lot of cheap ones don't have a MIDI interface. 
Um, a few other things, people building their own with like various things. Um, and then I found one, some guy calling himself Cody, spelled with a K, um, in Korea, and he'd made um, sort of a DIY 61 key keyboard um, from sort of scratch and built his own Arduino based controller. Um, and I thought that was quite interesting because um, he basically seemed to have got a key bed. Uh, like in here, and I'll sure. I mean, I'll just take the case off. Um, so I have actually been doing stuff with this already. Um, you can see my prototype version of a uh, controller here. <laughs> so uh, basically, the whole like key assembly here, um, without the case and the controller and everything, he seemed to have bought one of those from somewhere just by itself. Um, no electronics whatsoever. Just the just the keys and the PCB for the um, buttons underneath that sense the actual velocity and everything. Um, and he built his own thing with that. And I looked at it and I realized that this, uh, you know, this key, key bed was exactly the same as the one that he'd bought. I don't know how he got it. It was like a spare parts. He bought it from a spare parts thing or something. But I think this is not built by M Audio. I think they just made the controller or got someone else to do it. Um, and probably the housing and all that, the case. But it seems like this particular key thing is, is like a common part that is used by various manufacturers. Um, so I don't know where who it actually came from. I'm not sure if I'll ever figure that out. But anyway, so I realized uh, that this uh, key bed here was exactly the same as the one he had. And I figured, well, I could just adapt his circuitry to um, just put in here. And so basically that's what I've done. So I built a basic prototype on this uh, strip board, perf board here. Um, kind of stuff, it's got a kind of design, it's kind of like a breadboard actually, kind of like a PCB version of a breadboard. Um, so I built that, it's got an Atmega 328 in there, standard Arduino thing, it's got a couple of 7400 ICs that help do the key scanning, um, and it's got a regulator and everything on there, and this is a RS-232 interface I was using to upload uh, different sketches to it to the Arduino software, um, which is what he programmed his stuff in originally, so using that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it seems to work fairly well. Uh, I didn't hook up any of the um, controls on the front. As you can see, it's got some things, volume, some buttons, it's got a pitch wheel and stuff like that. They all plug in with just standard plugs there. Um, so I haven't uh, wired any of that up, I was just purely testing the keys um, in this prototype version, but um, I obviously here uh, did implement a little XY joystick which could be used for replacing two of the wheels. Um, I don't say replacing physically but you know comparatively with, with uh, uh, electronics. Um, he implements uh, a few buttons, a uh, sustain pedal which you can plug into this jack here, and um, various other things and I basically took uh, his schematic and wired up everything that I could. Uh, the only thing that I didn't get connected was the LEDs for each of the buttons. Um, so that doesn't that probably won't work, but you know that's not a big deal. Um, probably the functionality of the software is not going to be as advanced as the original stuff in this one. Um, I'm not entirely sure the features this has, but I do know one of the features it has is uh, the ability to take MIDI. Um, commands into the USB interface and put them out through the MIDI port. Um, this design will not have that functionality. It probably wouldn't be too hard to implement it, but the things like that that you know I personally don't need myself, and um, I'm not going to bother doing unless I decide that I need them later on or something. But aside from that, I just want the basic thing. I just want all the keys to work. I want the uh, wheels to work and I want the uh, buttons to do something. Um, I think the original one, because this is obviously not a full key keyboard, um, the original buttons have the function for octave shifting so you can shift the notes up and down and obviously play, um, you know, virtually extend the keyboard uh, without having to muck around in software and, and that, so you kind of do that. So maybe I'll see if I can implement that in software as well as, as in this controller. Um, I don't think his original code had something like that, so I'll probably may have to try and do that myself. Um, fortunately, it should be quite easy. I think um, the code is all, most of the code is already done. I think it should be quite simple to do that. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
I guess the uh, the hard part is just making sure the code actually runs smoothly because the whole um, key scanning of this, the sort of timing routine for that does need to obviously run um, without too much lag or anything. It can't really be interrupted too much, otherwise you know you'd get dropped notes and stuff, or you'd get a delay. You press the key and then you know a second later, it, well, I'd say a second, but you know there'd be a, an audible delay and it would be confusing if you're actually trying to um, do something in real time. So you know the software does have to actually be quite good enough to not have that sort of problem. Um, so anyway, um, basically, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to build my own controller for this and hopefully get as much as I can get working that I can, and if there are some stuff that doesn't work well, too bad. Um, but basically, what I, from what I've tested here, uh, the basic design does function quite well. Uh, I'm not going to hook it up and test it here because it would be too um, complicated at the moment. Um, but once I get this going, I should be able to do a demonstration of the thing actually working. Um, but yeah, so I don't expect that anyone will necessarily find this particularly interesting because I don't, I don't know the failure rate on these. Um, it's probably not that high, I suspect. I mean, in this case, there was damage to the USB port, so it's entirely plausible that um, when whatever happened to that happened to it, uh, it caused damage to the microcontroller. Maybe one of the pins, maybe the data pins got shorted out to the... Um, power pin or something, or maybe someone plugged the plug-in backwards without realizing that the connector was broken or something, I mean, who knows, could have been anything really, um, that would be my guess, you know, that's the most logical thing, or who knows, maybe the controller, the microcontroller just failed by itself, uh, manufacturing defect or something, and someone yanked the cord out in a fit of rage and broke the connector, I mean, who knows, it could have happened. Um, so which one came first, I don't know, but I mean my most likely guess is that the broken connector somehow caused the fault in the microcontroller because it does appear to be shorted, it just draws 200 milliamps and does nothing else, so um, it does not seem to be in very good condition. So yeah, so I'm kind of halfway through putting this together, um, I've already stolen the connectors, most of them off uh, the original board, um, I just need to copy, a copy. I mean, just uh, steal these ones as well for plugging in the uh, other buttons and that. Um, I've already done this one and this one. I also pinched uh, a few of the ferrite beads for like the USB data lines and the inputs and outputs and that. Um, probably not necessary, but you know they had it, so might as well use it. Um, increases reliability to some extent, I guess. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's how that is, and I'm just going to start taking the parts off here now and putting them onto this board there, so um, that, that's how that's going to go. So nothing really particularly interesting at this point. Um, I just have to start desoldering parts from the prototype and putting them on the new board here. Um, yeah, so this, uh, this uses will actually use two microcontrollers. Um, I've got the Atmega 328 here, which will do all the main functions, um, scanning the keys, interpreting the data, sending out the correct messages. Um, and then I'm going to have a uh, Atmega 16U, which is uh, on the back here, so it's quite similar to the Arduino Uno, I think. Um, and that will handle the conversion of the MIDI messages to USB format, which can be then more easily connected to a computer that doesn't have a... Uh, MIDI interface or joystick port or whatever, because most of the modern ones don't anymore, um, unless you add a separate sound card or whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, but I figured, you know, having both uh, interfaces is probably the best option, so that's why I'm doing both of them. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a, kind of a, I mean, the, the schematic for this is very similar to the Arduino Uno, um, with just some extra, com basically the extra components, the uh, counter and the um, shift register or whatever it is that scans the keys um, I just added on as well and also a buffer for the MIDI interface because they didn't have one on this but you know I think uh, you're supposed to have one uh, for best reliability you know 7404 so that'll be in there as well um, but yeah so not much to say really about that um, just a case of having to just move these parts over so you know nothing particularly interesting at this point. Um, so I guess I'll do that and I'll come back later 
um, once I've got everything working. Um, I don't have all the parts I need. There's one transistor um, MOSFET used for the uh, switching between the external DC jack and the USB power. Um, I'm going to copy that from the Arduino because that seemed to be a sensible way of doing it. Okay, so I've just finished putting together the uh, PCB version of the uh, sort of prototype controller board. Um, I say prototype version still because there's still some issues with it. Um, when I was doing the USB uh, part here I had to uh, change a couple of tracks because I made some errors in terms of the um, USB VCC and USB ground pins. Uh, the ground pin is supposed to be connected to all the other ground pins but I had left it off and I had accidentally uh, connected the USB VCC to the other VCC pin which it wasn't supposed to be so I had to make some modifications there and you can see I've lifted uh, pin 31 on the Hatmega U16 um, to do that which was quite fiddly but anyway um, I added a couple of service mount tantalums here by the Atmega 328 because its power supplies come from a bunch of sort of wire links halfway across the board so I thought it would be a good idea to add those, they're just 4.7 microfarad and then I've got um, a typical 100 microfarad up here, these blue ones which are just some <laughs> old ones that I had lying around because I ran out of the uh, standard ceramic ones but hey it should work um, and then I've added a ceramic cap there for the decoupling for this uh, IC, which is a 7404 to drive the MIDI output because um, that's recommended in the design. I didn't, I forgot to put a footprint for that in the board, so I had to solder it on the bottom side, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean some of these connectors, these ones are crammed up pretty close to each other, so spacing for these is not that great. Um, I had to run some wires around. Yeah, it's not the best. Um, probably could be more optimized and also um, I did notice that the amount of space I had um, in the case for the keyboard is actually more than I thought I did so initially I just copied the same size as the original controller board but there's actually a lot enough enough room I could have uh, extended this out quite far probably like an inch around this side so could have easily fit everything without having to add these top side wire links probably but yeah anyway that's how it's, how it's happened so I've pulled the um, original prototype part as you can see um, so this would be kind of like the alpha version, if this was an alpha version then um, and this would probably be a beta version <laughs> um, like I said the board layout does have these errors especially for this control chip here so I would definitely want to optimize this a bit more if I wanted to make another one but I'll probably never need to make another one so yeah but if anyone else for some reason needs one of these themselves um, it definitely isn't perfect and it definitely needs some work so bear that in mind if you take the files and look at them directly um, anyway so I've just uh, been reattaching these wires which I took off the the other board here um, and these connect to the keyboard as you can see so we've got this um, ribbon cable here this one plugs into and then these two cables here plug into these two headers here um, so yeah, it basically drives from this, which is a 74HC, uh, what is it, um, 154, so I think that's some kind of like binary controlled shift register or something, I forget exactly. <laughs> anyway, this uh, scans through the, um, the 8 outputs, well actually 16 I think, There's 2 pins here, 2 sets of plugs and that goes all along for the different sections, just a big key matrix basically and then the uh, have this input one here, the column sort of things, these are kind of like row drivers, this is column drivers so these go a red by the Atmega 328 down here and it just scans out with this chip here to uh, do that, so we've got a uh, counter chip here and that drives this and then that drives all these and this I said is a 7404 which drives the output to the MIDI port which only is an output um, there's no input functionality on this um, it's not really necessary because there's no point to it um, and then we've got the USB here so that's the USB that should provide in and out but again there's nothing really to do on here except maybe um, you know if you could configure some kind of setting but there's not really anything to configure so um, 
The original design did have the option to take MIDI messages in through the USB and put them out through the MIDI out port, um, which I can probably do if I can change the software enough to do it. Um, but I'll probably never use that functionality myself anyway. Uh, but yeah, and then we got the sustain pedal jack here. Um, if you want to add that, and there was a switch in this location for switching between the uh, onboard 5 volt regulator and the 5 volt through the USB. But I ditched that because I couldn't be bother using it because I did the auto switching like they have on the Arduino Uno um, with the LM358 and a little MOSFET which is uh, just here. So yeah, um, basically it's all done. I've programmed this with the standard USB serial for the Arduino. Um, I'll change it to the MIDI controller firmware later. I just wanted to do that just to test it was working and it was a good thing I did because then I had to fix these tracks up that were wrong. Um, this is already programmed with the software I was using for uh, the uh, prototype original version uh, which doesn't include the input handling for the buttons and wheels and stuff so it's only doing the keys so I will have to change that later on but I've added you know the six pin ICSP header there to update the software with later and I've got my little programming dongle thing parallel port SDK 200 compatible board thing here so I can do that later um, but for now I'm just going to be connecting this and plugging it all back in um, and uh, testing it out and upgrading the firmware and getting the correct one on this so that'll be that um, battery on this is about to die so I'm not going to talk for too long but yeah um, so yeah this the, the uh, pinout for this keybed is actually a little bit different to the one that the Korean guy was using uh, the connectors are a little bit different I think but you know this uh, electrically the schematic for all these you know these diodes here and, and everything the keys themselves is, is identical um, but it just took me a while to figure out how these connectors were actually uh, pinned out because they weren't the same um, as the one he had. His one had two separate connectors instead of three so um, that was a bit different but um, basically it does work. It is if it, electrically the same thing they've just got two connectors for this uh, input instead of one basically. Um, but yeah like I said probably no one else will ever have to do this hopefully so um, it probably doesn't really matter but there we go this is uh, almost finished or at least well this is finished and now I have to plug it in and see if it works so I'll be back when I've done that okay so I've just about finished this thing basically um, I've got uh, most of everything working that I want to get working um, and I'll just do a little demonstration in a second to show you um, that things are actually working so um, yeah so I'll just uh, open it up and show you how it's uh, going so I've got the uh, all the controls plugged in as you can probably see I'll have to unplug them to get the lid off um, so yeah so it's got the uh, these three boards here it's got these two wheels you got a pitch wheel and a modulation wheel and um, then you got the three buttons and three LEDs and then you've got a volume slider just a slider potentiometer um, over here so um, the original design that uh, the Korean guy Cody designed um, was designed to have two pedals for an input um, one XY joystick and I think one wheel maybe or maybe no just an XY joystick and two buttons yeah two buttons an XY joystick and two pedals so that obviously isn't the configuration I've got here in this case you've got uh, two wheels, one slider, three buttons, three LEDs, and one pedal. Um, so I had to change the code a little bit to uh, make sense with that. Um, the other thing, like I said before, the three LEDs aren't actually connected to anything, so um, those don't light up, but I kind of figured, well, um, that's not a big deal. Um, I think to... Um, to get those working you'd probably have to add like some sort of shift register or I squared C port expander or something um, to the design and I just didn't want to go for the complexity it was just easier just to leave them disconnected which is a bit sad but you know for completeness it's obviously not great but 
Um, I've used a bigger microcontroller or something, but you know, I just wanted to use what I had on hand and just uh, get the basic functionality working that I wanted, and it doesn't really matter about the LEDs. Uh, so yeah, this is all working at the moment, so that's it there, screwed into the thing. Um, so I took uh, I took one of the pedal inputs that was connected to an analog input um, and I swapped that for this volume slider instead um, and set that up in the code and then instead of the uh, XY joystick I've got the um, the two wheels so that would be the same I mean, same basic thing, it's just reading two analog inputs um, and I've just redefined in the code what those actually do um, I had to, well I think one was already defined and the other wasn't defined at all so I had to add that um, and then the three buttons I had, uh, yeah, I think one one at the moment still doesn't do anything. Um, that's the, I'll just plug this back in. Um, so put this back together. So, so we got the advanced function button. And I'm not entirely sure what that did originally because I never, the thing obviously never worked. Um, and then you've got a octave up and down. Well, it's up and it's down. Um, so I set this as the up button and this is the down button. It was already set in software, and what that actually does is it does a program change. So when you press that, it goes to the next uh, instrument or whatever, and you press that, it goes to the previous one. So it just cycles around through those. Um, that's kind of useful, but that's not really what I want. Um, so what I'll do is I'll update the code later, I guess. Uh, what I do want is to have the octave shift thing because, like I said, there's not a full 88 key keyboard, it's only 61. Um, so I would like to have these buttons by default do the octave shifting as they would have probably done in the original product. Um, and then I think the advanced function button, I might just make that as a toggle between like the uh, octave shift and uh, other things, like toggle between that and the um, instrument change, program change, whatever. Um, or maybe do other stuff. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know really what I what I'm going to do with this exactly. So you know, if there's some function that I decide I want to use or something, then I could add that later. Um, <laughs> but at the moment, yeah, I've just got this basically set up. So the buttons all work. They are all physically connected, and the code does support them, and it reads the status of them. Um, and we'll. Uh, do that, but only these two actually do anything at the moment, so I have to add the code for that. But yeah, it uh, is basically working though, so if I plug this in, um, I can hook it up to uh, the the uh, system, and I can do a little test to show that it does actually work. So, um, plug in the USB, so we're just running it over USB at the moment. Um, and if I go up, uh, let's see, so I need, I'll get a, oh yeah, MIDI monitor, I think, that's a start, and I need the patch bay thing, okay, so now we're screen capturing, so We've got this patch bay, we've got this G Media Monitor thing, so this is uh, the... This will show all the MIDI messages going through it, so you have to connect this manually for some reason, I'm not sure. So we've got Arduino MIDI, so that's our input from the USB um, MIDI thing, so I want to route that to uh, MIDI Monitor, obviously MIDI in, so... So now all the MIDI messages will come in and go to this, so... There we go. So it's just randomly said this note is gone, but okay, whatever. Um, so, you know, if I press a key, it uh, works. You can see that comes up. Um, so it, that, that works perfectly fine. If I do the uh, pitch wheel, we get the uh, values for that. Uh, modulation wheel, so that'll uh, go up and down here, and then we've got the volume. Uh, goes from 0 to 127, and if I say um, press the up and down, we see it goes through the different instruments there, so um, yeah, it all makes sense. If I press the uh, middle key, nothing happens, but yeah, like I said, um, that hasn't actually been hooked up yet, but yeah, it uh, all seems to work. So it is um, sending all these different uh, messages, as it should be, and that's all functioning, so yeah, it uh 
basically all makes sense. So I'll just do a, uh, I'll just hook it up to an actual synthesizer, well, software synth in here. Um, I don't have the ability though to record the audio on this and also do that um, at the same time because the way the audio thing in Linux works and the way it's like uh, like Audacity I'm recording through like Pulse Audio and the synthesizer sampler playback program uh, needs to use jack and you know, they you know they want exclusive access um, it doesn't work to run both at once so I don't know there might be a way of doing it but um, with a different recording program or something but at the moment I'll just uh, yeah I'll just stop <laughs> screen capturing um, and I'll stop recording this audio and I'll switch over to um, recording the audio from the actual speakers instead because I'll have to do that um, separately. Right, okay, so um, I'm just going to, uh, now that I've finished recording with Audacity on here, because like I said it doesn't work if I do it at the same time, um, I will have to use this now and I will load, where is it? So if I run this program here, QSynth, um, which is a basic sort of uh, sample playback thing. Um, so if we just check that, so this has got a basic sort of um, free sound font thing that comes with it. Um, it's not particularly you know realistic or anything in terms of audio. Um, but it works, so it's good for testing. Um, so that's all running. So now I've got to connect it again with the uh, thing. So now we've got this uh, plugged in. So now we want to send that into the this. We actually hear a noise because it's um, there. We go. So now if I just turn this up, I don't know how loud this is going to be. Let's see if it works. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it is actually working. Um, I'll just uh, sit this on here. Uh, hopefully that'll pick up. So if I go, it does work. In fact. Um, And if, say, I, I use this, I can go... So yeah, and, and say this volume slider, for example. This does work. Um, not really much point, though. Um, but yeah, and... Uh, these keys, I mean, I can change the different instruments, so if we go up... And I mean, exactly. This all is uh, just working through this. So this is changing um, the instruments are actually in this uh, software. It's not doing anything on the keyboard. This is just sending messages, and that's all it does. Um, so yeah, but you can you know set this into this, and you can play it as an instrument by running it through um, some sort of synth program or sample program or whatever. So yeah, I mean, like I said. Um, Add some extra functionality to the buttons, just require adding some code to handle, you know, what these buttons are doing and um, changing the thing. Uh, pretty much all the variables required for actually shifting the octaves and everything else is already set up in the code. It just hasn't actually been, you know, linked to anything for the button event. So I just have to write some kind of uh, basic sort of thing that uh, can toggle this through different functions and then these can do different things. Um, shouldn't be too hard really, um, even though I'm not that great at coding. Um, it seems to be a pretty basic thing. I mean, fortunately, you know, like 90, 98% of the uh, code required to get this thing going was already uh, done by um, the other people that have, have obviously worked on it. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so at the moment, uh, I mean, I don't know when I'll do that, so it could be, you know, ages from now. Um, 
so I'm not going to add that in here it'll probably take a long too long and the video is basically finished you know this is you know I've shown everything I've built the board I've got the thing working basically to an extent so so yeah um I will have to edit the files uh, fix up those two track errors for that IC and maybe um fix some spacing between the uh the uh the the pin headers for the plugging in the uh controls here um yeah change the board design a little bit um yeah like i said it's it's not a full like compatible replacement with the original board it doesn't have all the features it doesn't connect the leds um it would need work i'll fix the obvious errors i think and then i'll release the uh the files along with this video um, to anyone else who wants to play around with it or whatever can do so um, but bear in mind that if you want the LEDs for example to work you will need to you know add in maybe an extra board or something or, or you know you there will be things you'll have to change to get that working you have to you might want to change most of the board um, put in like a much bigger microcontroller with more pins something like that I mean that would definitely solve the problem uh, it's probably the Atmega 328 is probably not the best uh, the best option really there are probably better ones that you could use um, but yeah uh, maybe the I don't know I'm not sure which one exactly there, there was one mentioned in the um, in the uh, design files that it, I think it was compatible with I think it was the one used in the Arduino Mega or whatever that is that the I think 2560 comes to mind but I'm not entirely certain anyway I've never actually used one so uh, I don't know the pin count and I don't know like um, but yeah I mean it should it should work and with a with a big um, microcontroller like that you may even be able to fit the uh, well you might be able to fit like the USB code and the uh, the rest of it all in the same thing I'm not sure um, but that would require a lot of work. I mean, if you just basically want this to function, if you had one of these and it's broken and you want to replace the board, um, this basic design will do, you know, most of probably what you want. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, unless you're good at coding, you probably won't have to make anything so much better than that. I mean, I uh, obviously won't be, but anyway, I mean, it does work. It does do what it says. Um, so yeah, it's uh, not too bad. Um, but yeah, I'll fix the uh, glaring errors and I'll release the uh, files as is. Um, if anyone wants to use them, it uh, you know 95% works. Um, there was a problem with the uh, ICSP header or ISP header for the uh, uh, Atmega 328 because um, the programming pins are shared between the pins which are reading the key matrix. So it's actually they've got uh, 10k pull-up resistors on them. Um, and those were interfering with the uh, programming data um, transmission. So when I wanted to reprogram the chip, I actually have to pull it out of the board and um, put it into the Arduino board, and then I'll program it through that with the ISP header on that. Um, it was kind of annoying. Uh, the only really way to fix that would be to, again, use a bigger micro with more pins or um, add in support for like a jumper block or dip switches that let you switch the uh, those pull-up resistors in and out. Um, so that the um, they don't interfere with the uh, programming, and then or have you know a switch or something that can can be done. But that's only really necessary for development, I guess. You know, if you were building this from scratch, um, and you had a final, you know, if you wanted to just copy this exactly as it was, you know, you've got the uh, you only have to upload the hex file once. So you could upload that before you put the resistors in, and then put them in, and then you know that's that done. If you want to reprogram after that you'd either have to take the micro out or you would have had to change the board um, design first but in any case I mean it, it mostly works um, <laughs> like I said it's good enough for me it does all the basic functionality all the keys work um, the wheels will work and um, the buttons are basically working um, I'll just uh, change that I guess change the auction change the auction what <laughs> change the octave shift fu fu functionality so that, that actually functions and I can switch between it and that's probably about it um, in terms of like routing MIDI messages from USB in to MIDI out on the port there uh, I'm not sure 
there would probably need to be some software changes for that, but probably minor. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, may may need to actually be changed. Uh, I don't know. The hardware might need to be changed a little bit for that. Instead of having like a uh, inverting buffer like a 7404 that I have on the output, maybe I want to have like an AND gate or something so you can um, have multiple inputs and you can have the input from the USB or the input um, from the other chip or something. Anyway, I don't know. That's just something I'm thinking about. But like I said, I probably never actually use that at all. So no point in trying to implement it at the moment. But if anyone else wants to, then I'm sure they can. Um, yeah, there you go. I mean, that's it um, so far. So I think that's pretty much a success. Uh, this thing has been resurrected and rebuilt, and yeah, pretty much works as uh, as hoped. So yeah, it's pretty good. So a good result there, and um, hopefully I can use it and do something. Um, maybe anyway, <laughs> I'll see you next time.